have shown in previous issues of Gum on British News the combined action that gave the important seaport of Majunga into our safekeeping. We are following up with a record of the surrender of the great island's capital, Nananari. Madagascar commanded too many of our sea routes to be left wide open to access entry. It seems quite a peaceful sort of landing. From the sea, our newsreel camera follows the course in land of the Empire troops who had a delicate job to do. No doubt Madagascar could have been taken in a fraction of the time if we had practiced Blitzkrieg methods. Vichy troops had offered more passive than active opposition. Bridges blown up hampered the advance on all roads. Another bridge destroyed at Ankazobi. Only a few miles from the capital, Tananari, a temporary crossing was made with reeds and rushes. Some wreckage of cars and lorries indicated that the Madagascar campaign had not been entirely without bloodshed. Machine gun nests in the hills were cunningly concealed. They had to be cleaned out with care. But beside them, the peaceful humdrum work of the island continued as usual. Inhabitants who had been made to help in the construction of roadblocks were now made to clear up the mess. So we came in sight of Tananari, Madagascar's capital, and at the aerodrome our general officer commanding arrived by plane, General Platt. He was received by Brigadier Dimoline and the quizzling mayor of Tananari. And so the capital surrendered and the way was left open for the entry of our troops. Once again, you'll see there's no hostility from the people who line the streets to watch the changing course of fortune. It's good to know that we've done with turning the blind eye to treachery. Though Vichy is technically out of the war and neutral, it's plain that Laval and Pétain and their kidney are helping Germany by every possible means. It is our duty to ourselves and all our allies to treat them as they are, as enemies. Thank you.